And drug companies on us, a story that's simply stunning about multi-million dollar profits and illegal activity at this country's biggest drug company. Now, we're bringing you this story tonight because the battle over health care reform is nearing its end. Tonight, congressional leaders say they are planning a final push to a vote next week, and President Obama has postponed a trip to Asia to focus on the end game. Presumably, he'll be twisting with some elbows as Democrats try to nail down the votes they need. Now, as you know, Obama has been turning up the heat in uh, his health care speeches all week. Two days ago, he ordered a crackdown on waste and fraud. With some estimates, health care fraud adds billions to costs each year. But tonight, we're going to show you one example, an astonishing case that resulted in a record fine. But did the punishment actually match the crime? And is there anything to stop this company or other big drug, drug companies from doing it again? We're keeping them honest. Here's Drew Griffin. Pfizer Incorporated, with 116,000 employees and revenues of $50 billion a year, it is the world's largest pharmaceutical company. And that's why this news last fall sounded like a morning, huge everyone, victory for, for the government today. and a huge loss for Pfizer. The largest health care fraud settlement in the history of the Department of Justice. The government was building a case against Pfizer for fraudulently marketing a drug that had raked in hundreds of millions of dollars in profits, a painkiller called Bextra. Pfizer aggressively marketed it for uses and in doses not approved by the FDA. They didn't just implicate Pfizer. They actually identified and charged the senior managers who were responsible for the fraud. But our investigation found another story, one that officials here at the Department of Justice downplayed on that day they declared victory. It's the story about the power major pharmaceutical companies have even when they break the laws intended to protect patients. We're keeping them honest, and we begin nine years ago, in 2001, when the FDA approved Bextra, but only for limited use and only for menstrual cramps and arthritis. Even so, Pfizer sales reps promoted it illegally for surgical pain in higher doses, uses the FDA had rejected due to safety concerns. And doctors responded. Instead of prescribing, say, ibuprofen at pennies a pill, they prescribed Bextra at nearly $3 a pill for all kinds of unapproved uses. Sales were very good. Glenn DeMott was a sales rep in Columbus, Ohio. He would later collect reward money that the federal government gives whistleblowers. Yeah. Did the sales rep know what they were doing was illegal? They said that the district manager approved it. They think it might not be legal, but if they don't make their numbers, they're not going to keep their job anyway. It brought Pfizer nearly a billion dollars in profits, and it cost us all because Medicare, Medicaid, and our private insurance picked up much of the tab. Mike Laux, then a federal prosecutor in Boston, launched an investigation. If the company is able to push the product for the unapproved indication, then it makes a mockery, if you will, of the FDA approval process. Even though prosecutors said the illegal conduct was tolerated, and encouraged by sales managers across the country, Pfizer escaped the ultimate punishment. Just as giant banks on Wall Street were considered too big to fail, Pfizer was considered too big to nail. Why? Because a company convicted of major fraud would automatically be kicked out of Medicare and Medicaid. Pfizer would no longer be allowed to bill any federal health programs for any of its products. It would be a corporate death sentence. If a company like Pfizer ex is excluded from Medicare and Medicaid, they're out of business. Lewis Morris, a top lawyer at the Department of Health and Human Services, told us Pfizer's collapse could leave thousands out of work, millions not getting their medications. We have to ask whether, by excluding the company, are we harming our patients? Are we harming the beneficiaries who need these critical drugs? Since shutting down Pfizer was unthinkable, Pfizer and the feds cut a deal. And here's how they did it. Pfizer, located here in New York, owns a company named Pharmacia Corporation, which owns another company called Pharmacia and Upjohn LLC, which owns Pharmacia and Upjohn Company LLC, which in turn owns 
Pharmacia and Upjohn Company, Incorporated. And what does Pharmacia and Upjohn Company, Incorporated do? Nothing. It's a shell created to be a legal shield for Pfizer. In other words, if Pfizer was at risk of being convicted, the shell company would take the hit. Think of it as the great, great grandson of the parent company. Birthday, March 27, 2007. Just in time to plead guilty in a kickback case against a company Pfizer had acquired a few years earlier. With that conviction, Pharmacia and Upjohn Company Incorporated, which had never sold so much as a single pill, was excluded from Medicare. Two years later, when Pfizer was in trouble with Bextra, Pharmacia and Upjohn Company Incorporated, the shell company, stepped up again and pleaded guilty. It was like having an imaginary friend, an imaginary bad guy to take the rap. And Pfizer, too big to nail, is still doing business with the federal government. It is true that if a company is created um, to take a criminal plea, but it's just a shell, uh, the impact of an exclusion is minimal or non-existent. Did the punishment fit the crime? Pfizer says yes. It paid nearly $1.2 billion in a criminal fine for Bextra, the largest fine ever. It paid a billion dollars more to settle civil suits, although it denies wrongdoing on allegations it illegally promoted 12 other drugs. In all, Pfizer lost the equivalent of three months' profit. But even Mike Lauchs, who spent more than a decade prosecuting some of the largest drug companies in the country, isn't sure that two billion dollars is enough to make Big Pharma clean up its act. I worry that the incentives are so great, the money is so great, uh, that that has uh, uh, maybe made it dealing with us, the Department of Justice, as just a cost of doing business. So, Drew, what does Pfizer have to say about all this? Anderson, nothing on camera. After a lot of back and forth, we got a phone conversation with the company's chief compliance officer. He told us, look, Pfizer takes full responsibility for illegally promoting Bextra. And to prevent it from happening again, here's what Pfizer said it's done. It's set up a leading-edge system. It monitors sales reps tracking prescription sales and proactively looking for signs that its people are illegally promoting these drugs. So are, are, is Pfizer doing this voluntarily? No, not all voluntary. Pfizer, they had to sign what's called a corporate integrity agreement with the Department of Health and Human Services. Basically, the executives at Pfizer have to sign on the dotted line to say that their company is going to comply with the law. But, I mean, you look at this thing, and, I mean, if Pfizer is too big to fail, and even the biggest fine in history is just a few months' profit, then what's going to stop it from illegally promoting other drugs? Critics say, Anderson, nothing. Nothing. They think that this is really, even though it's a big, big fine, you know, what, $2 billion, they say, look, it is a cost of doing business. And until, even the prosecutor, until and unless somebody goes to prison, somebody high up goes to prison, and or the company is banned from selling drugs to Medicare or Medicaid, this activity, like it has in the past with so many other companies, will continue. Mm. Drew, thanks. Keep them honest. Thanks for...